What it do, flight crew? FTC. Flight team, stand up! We got the man Jimmy High Roller. What did I just witness? Now, there's wet bananas on the thumbnail now, so could this possibly be a Wimby type of video? We'll figure it out. A few days ago during the Pacers-Knicks matchup, I saw something that I have never seen before. What? And it completely blew my mind. Nice bounce pass, Jackson fouled. And we've got a pigeon as the ball is stuck by old Topper. Oh, no, we got a replay. The top is just incredible hops. What did he do? Oh. Oh. Did y'all just see that? It happened quick. And if you weren't paying hey, close attention during this broadcast, you could easily miss it. But Obi Toppin just casually dislodged the ball. At yeah, nah, that's some ups right there. I don't care how tall you're. Bro, you're literally like, this is like the top of the backboard. Because the rim is 10 feet. And so you get up about here, the top of the backboard. That's about a 15 feet, right? The top of the backboard. After the game, I had to go and find this clip and rewatch it that's a few times crazy. to make sure I wasn't tripping. And sure enough, I was not. Obi Toppin just touched the top of the backboard. Not that long ago, a feat like this was stuff of legend. We used to hear stories yeah, about Dwight crazy that, athletic players from the past being able to pull this Is off. Is that Will? There was never any video evidence or See this footage right there. The being able to pull this this got to be the 40s. Off. But there was never any video evidence or Maybe that was a footage from his 100 point game. So we just had to take their word for it, regardless of how unbelievable it sounded. And it always sounded unbelievable. Something that used to be claimed as a feat of superhuman athleticism. And Obi Toppin just jogged up and did it like it was nothing. And almost as crazy as the jump itself is the fact that no one even batted an eye. Yeah, they didn't, they it just didn't look really get normal. much of a reaction. No one talked about it after. Hardly anyone even made note of it. It kind of just came and went. I guess this is just normal now, which got me thinking. Are NBA players today better athletes now than ever before? It's obvious by now that the skill level Yeah, yo, one thing, I will definitely say that. Now, if we're talking about, like, overall skill-wise, there is a couple of 90s and 2000s players. We're not going to be having that same argument that we had during the, you know what I'm saying, the last summer or something like that, right, where they were talking about, we're done with the 90s and this and that. But I definitely will say no. These athletes, in terms of, like, it depends also, too, because sometimes – Certain IQ don't be there, but overall athleticism definitely right now in the generation wipes clean of any past. And that's honestly with just any sports. I just really feel like, too, is that there's just newer technology. We have better knowledge on, like, what to eat and what not to eat. You have social media helping, like, certain, you know, give free tips and free game on how people can, you know, whatever, get better, whatever high. craft. There's no debate there. But are NBA players more athletic than players of the past? Can they actually jump higher and run faster than players that came before them? That seems to be the general consensus right now. And it's definitely what my eyes are seeing. But according to the data, this may not be the case. Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings. And King's Daily App now, it's King's Plea Comes Evolution. You see it everywhere you look. With time, inevitably comes evolution. Skip. You see it everywhere you look. However, the one area in life where this has been up for debate is the NBA. Fans of past eras claiming the league has regressed and is somehow now in a worse state than it was decades ago. But after some lighthearted and completely rational, level-headed discussions, it seems most fans generally agree that the league is in fact better now than it was in the past. Shooting is better, Damn, is why more he that? players are more skilled, but does Someone this same logic going apply to the actual physical abilities of players? Are today's NBA players better athletes than their predecessors? Well, according to the comment section of any past player's highlight reel, they sure are, claims that today's players are not just more skilled, but they are far superior athletes. And as biased and nearsighted as this may sound, when watching these games today, it's becoming hard to deny. While watching this year's preseason, it felt like what was once a jaw-dropping feat of athleticism has now become a fairly regular occurrence. 
Like, what is this? Christian Brown, a player who is not even regarded as a high flyer, taking off in traffic, head at the rim, gets stuffed by Hardenstein, and they're back off to the races head like was nothing at the even rim? happened. Rim gets stuffed by Hardenstein, and they're back off to the crazy. races like nothing even happened. Here's a play by Brandon Miller. A skill guy. Yo. Why is he catching a body like Prime Blake Griffin? All right, now Zach he threw it in. He threw it in. Seven four, three hundred pounds, and the man is catching lobs like he's an athletic stretch four. This is the same guy who, coming into the draft, was described as a plotter, slow, unathletic. Hell no. This nah. guy, he whose strengths were noted as everything but his athleticism, who's catching the ball from the stratosphere. Seven five, alien, leaning into a double pump. What am I watching? Uh, this block by Malik Monk? This is insane. Somewhere there's a career defensive mixtape of Michael Jordan doing the same exact block. Nowadays, this is just another Tuesday in the NBA. None of these plays from a week's worth of preseason games will make anyone's career highlight tape. They're not really noteworthy in today's game. In fact, despite their incredible physical tools, some of these players aren't even on an NBA team at the moment. So are NBA players today athletically superior to players of the past? According to years worth of data across not just basketball, but many sports, the answer time and time again is no. Anatomical and physical evolution takes far longer than just a few decades. Most measurable metrics suggest that there's little to no improvement on athleticism of athletes today versus athletes 20 or 30 years ago. And most of what little improvement has been made can usually be attributed to better training, better nutrition, and better equipment. But when it comes to the NBA specifically, what exactly does the data say? And how much athletic progression has there been over the last 20 or 30 years, if any at all? Here is a graph of the average vertical leap of every NBA draftee since 2000. Unfortunately, there isn't any publicly available data on draft classes before 2000, but still, this is a quarter century worth of data. And throughout the last 25 years and nearly 1,500 players, there has been a slight increase in leaping ability of players around the league. In 25 years, the average vertical leap in the NBA has increased by about three inches or about 8% wow. higher That's than it? it was 25 years ago, which isn't much, It'll but more it is that. notable considering the sample size. However, three inches of leaping ability does not explain the elevation in gameplay and acrobatics that we see in the NBA today compared to where it was nearly three decades ago. In fact, an 8% increase around the league could be attributed to simply the optimization of athletics rather than the athletes themselves. As previously mentioned, equipment, training, and nutrition. What is interesting, though, is that 25 years ago, there was a distinct separation in explosiveness from position to position, different skill sets for different roles on the court. But in recent years, the test results across all positions have converged. Perimeter players on average indistinguishable from one another and big men just slightly behind. One side effect of a positionless league is the merging of skills regardless of size. But inadvertently, this has also caused the merging of actual physical abilities regardless of size and alleged position. The NBA Combine also conducts an agility drill where players are tested on their lateral quickness and mobility. How fast can you cover space while cutting and changing direction? And in this metric, players have also gotten slightly more athletic over the last 25 years. And when I say slightly, I mean by just 3%, or 0.3 seconds better since 2000. An average that has gotten consistently better over the years, but by a negligible amount. Not nearly enough of a discrepancy to make any conclusions about better athletes in the NBA today than even 25 years ago. The Combine's sprint drill is as simple as it sounds. Sprint three quarters of the court as fast as you can. And in this test, NBA players have, again, not really changed at all since 2000. No measurable progress in flat out mm. speed across the NBA over the last 25 years. Really? Which means across three different tests of athletic ability conducted by over a thousand NBA players over the course of nearly three decades, the NBA is somewhere between 3 to 8% more athletic than it previously was, which is a long shot from the claims of superior athleticism. But possibly the most definitive answer to this question comes from a company that specializes in this exact field. In 2023, Ross Anderson of The Atlantic wrote a piece exploring the idea of athleticism in the NBA and if the data backs up what our eyes are seeing. 
that players today are better athletes than players of the past. And within his investigation, he got in touch with P3, a company that specializes in optimizing the performance of athletes. At P3, they use state-of-the-art technology to gather real-time data on athletes and then conduct an analysis to find areas in which they can improve athletically. And in the process, they have amassed some of the most comprehensive data sets on these athletes and their physical capabilities, such as raw force production, power, and overall movement and speed. Now, according to P3, two thirds of NBA players who suited up last season have worked out at their facility, which gives P3 incredibly detailed data on the majority of players around the league. And according to the data, today's average NBA athlete is four to 7% better than the average NBA athlete from more than 10 years ago which lines up with the data that we gathered from the NBA Combine. And it gives us great evidence that NBA players today, even if it isn't much, are better athletes than the players of the past. But Marcus Elliott, founder and director of P3, says this progress is a matter of performance optimization, not necessarily an evolution of the athletes themselves. Stating that when he began evaluating players about 15 years ago, many were operating at only 75 to 80% of their potential athleticism. Whereas really? today, players are operating at closer to 90% of their potential. But the extra 5 to 10% boost in athleticism over the course of a couple decades doesn't explain what we're actually seeing on the court and how it appears like players of today are far superior athletes than players of yesterday. So if NBA players have statistically only gotten marginally more explosive and agile over the last few decades, and all of the data says there isn't much evidence to prove otherwise, how do we explain the leap in physical abilities from today's players that we are actually seeing? Well, in order to answer this question, we need to redefine how we perceive and measure athleticism. Despite the years that have passed, Michael Jordan and the way he played remains an outlier in the timeline of basketball, where many players of the past have a game that aesthetically isn't so favorable through the lens of 2024, Michael's acrobatics are to this day a spectacle. And that is a perk exclusive to a man that was arguably the best athlete in the history of the league. <clears throat> but have you ever seen MJ attempt an East Bay? Bro, like, come on. He missed. But, like, bro, let's be real, bro. Michael Jordan in his prime can pull off an East Bay dunk, dog. That's actually a good statement and question that, you know, uh, High Roller made. And I didn't even really think about it like that. But come on, bro. Really, East Bay dunks is all about knowing how to emotionally do it right. Like, he obviously had... Bro, if he could take off the free throw line. Come on. Well, it's kind of weird. This footage is from 1989, during Michael's athletic peak. And let's be real, the East Bay dunk really wasn't, like, solidified like that. Like, people didn't really know what an East Bay dunk and wasn't really aware of it until, like, honestly, the early 2000s. I didn't really see my first person doing an East Bay dunk until, like, the, I think it was AM1 days. Like, I don't even think an NBA player attempted an East Bay dunk. He's got you know, so or unless it's a dunk contest, six feet six Vince Carter, tall. maybe his verb is well over 40 inches, and yet he struggled to throw down a dunk that has become fairly routine in the NBA today. Bro, Harold, like, come on, bro. There ain't no way, no, bro. I only seen a uh, topping of Obi do that East Bay dunk that one NBA game. It is not common like that. Niggas is not pulling out that East Bay dunk in a regular NBA game. Had all of the physical tools to easily pull off an East Bay. And I have absolutely no doubt that he could. After all, this is just one missed attempt. But this clip demonstrates that maybe it's not the athleticism that has gotten better over the years, but rather the way players use their athleticism. This is Orlando Woolridge, and he was the first player to pull off an East Bay in the NBA dunk contest back in 1984. Of course, this dunk existed before 1984, but it wasn't something players would regularly attempt, let alone pull off, even for the league's highest flyers. But over time, the dunk became more popular, almost like a measuring stick of elite jumping ability. Fast forward 15 years, and a simple East Bay would get you tens See? across the board in the NBA dunk contest in the late 90s and early 2000s. But Bro, today, faces. this dunk hardly even turns heads. Players are doing this in games. High school players who aren't nearly as explosive as a prime NJ are doing this dunk. Not because they are jumping higher or are more agile than their predecessors, but because players today have been taught Was that Bronny? on how to maximize, oh, I forgot he had optimize, East Bay dunk and use their physical tools to a far greater extent than players of the past. Oftentimes, players of the past possess all of the explosiveness and agility to pull off what we see in the league today. They just didn't know how to use it. 
At least not like today's athletes do. And according to countless studies regarding this topic, this is the prevailing theory, utilization and optimization of pre-existing physical abilities. The highlights and jaw-dropping feats of athleticism that we see far more often from players today aren't a result of them being more athletic, but rather having the skills and abilities to do more with their athleticism. The extra 5 to 10% of measurable improvement of athletic ability may explain some of this, but the evolution of specialized training and skill is the driving force here. A player in the 90s may have had all the physical tools to slice up a defense, cut through the lane, and put together a clip for their highlight reel, but without the skills to keep the ball in front of them along the way, those physical tools are essentially watered down to a slower, less explosive alternative. It's definitely Rise without a doubt. There was no, there was no argument at this whatsoever. Players, especially like maybe like after like the 2005 era, whenever A1 and stuff was coming up too, they definitely have way better handles than the niggas back then. That's a, that's a fact. Like that's Team something that's never even argued. Is a feat of athleticism, but so is the combo a player put together to break their defender and get to the rim in the first place. Without the skills to initiate the highlight. There is no highlight. And as the skill level around the Damn. league has jumped dramatically over time, so have all of the displays of athletic ability. Big men of the past may have had the vertical leap to go and catch a lob 12 feet in the air, but without the body control, play style, or constant high pick and roll action that we see today, they never really get the opportunity to put this athleticism on display. For example, Giannis Antetokounmpo is a freak of nature. And we know this because every other possession, he comes barreling down the lane and shows off his incredible speed, vert, and strength. His athleticism is always on full display. But if Giannis played back in 1995, how likely is it that he gets relegated to the low post, restricted to hook shots and having his back to the basket on most possessions? If he isn't granted the opportunity to learn how to handle the ball and be a scoring threat from outside and float around the perimeter, how often would he get a full head of steam to attack the basket and show off his physical tools? Similar to Giannis, David Robinson was a freak of nature. But outside of the occasional fast break or lob to the rim, there wasn't nearly as many opportunities for fans to witness the full extent of his freakish abilities. Even play style itself can play a deceptive role on how we view athleticism of certain players. In the 2008 NBA Combine, Russell Westbrook recorded a max vertical leap of 36.5 inches, not nearly as high as you would expect from seemingly one of the most explosive athletes in NBA history. Ten years later, Grayson Allen, a far cry from what you would consider to be an elite jumper, recorded a max vert of 40.5 inches. Nobody cares. In fact, Grayson <laughs> Allen tested better than Westbrook in every single drill in the Combine. And even knowing this, there isn't a soul on earth who would say he is a better athlete than Westbrook was. Duh. Because while Westbrook was playing above the rim, Grayson Allen was taking spot up threes. If I were to ask you who was the most explosive athlete between Stephen Curry and Blake Griffin, the answer would be painfully obvious. Except most fans would get it wrong. Because in the 2009 really? Combine, their results were virtually identical. Ooh! Blake was actually more This is why Curry my goat, bro. This is GOAT status, bro. And they not act like Blake Griffin, you know what I'm saying, isn't either. But, bro, the fact that Curry is competing with these damn similar draft combine stats and knowing how athletic Blake Griffin is. Go look up Blake Griffin's old Oklahoma college highlights um, and then the Lob City days with the Clippers, bro. That's a, Actually, I didn't even know this until today. Calvin that is Steph crazy. The agility drill, and Steph somehow clocked the same max vert as Blake did. Athleticism and how we as fans identify it can be a very misleading thing. It all depends on how and where you use it. When a player in the NBA makes a crazy layup, this is often a result of skill opening the door for athleticism, not the other way around. Knowing how to utilize the angles, how to attack a defender, how to move your body and get the best look at a shot. These are all skills that have been developed. Skills that are far beyond the average player of the past. And skills that allow players to actually use their athleticism to their full potential. And when we watch this, it appears to be more athletic than what we saw in the past. Because it is. But not in any quantifiable way that can be measured through a vert test or an agility drill. Without the ball in their hands, NBA players today are almost indiscernible from players of 25 years ago. There's almost no measurable difference between them. But give them the ball, some space, and a play style that emphasizes their abilities. And very quickly, the gap between what they are able to pull off on the court becomes clear as day. 
But this isn't to discount players of the past. There were countless players who would be top tier athletes in any generation. And the ones who had the skills to complement their athleticism prove that the NBA has always been loaded with great athletes. However, the number of players who were able to reach their full athletic potential without the training, technology, equipment, and knowledge that players of today have was far less, leading to a league Are that appeared dunks? to be far <laughs> less athletic I just noticed than it shit. is today. Are NBA players today better athletes than players of the past? It has to be. Well, technically, yeah, but not in the way that we have been led to believe. NBA players haven't evolved athletically. They don't jump much higher or run much faster than the players that came before them. But with the benefit of decades of advancements in how we measure, train, and improve athletes, today's NBA players have optimized their athleticism far more than players of the past. They understand their bodies and abilities more, and they have been meticulously trained to know exactly how to get the most out of them. The extra 5 to 10% of measurable increase in athletic performance may have something to do with the incredible plays we are now spoiled with, but many of these athletic feats can be attributed to a developed skill and complementary play style that is much more difficult to measure. Athletically, over time, NBA players haven't changed much at all, but how they use their athleticism, that is the evolution. All right. Jimmy High Roller. Very interesting uh, subject right here. I mean, to really end off the argument, to keep it real, bro, it don't matter how much you are stuck in, like, the past, nostalgia, or whatever like that, bro, you can't sit up here and say that past NBA players are more athletic. There's just no, no way. Now, obviously, given some certain past NBA players that are just, like, you know what I'm saying, freaking nature athletes and stuff, like, you know, the, the Michael Jordans or, like, the Bo Jacksons, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're excluded. But when you're talking about overall, like, bro, definitely this generation is wiping everybody clean, most of them, from the past when it comes to athleticism, bro. And that's just a fact. And it's going back on what I was talking about earlier. You just got the increased amount of technology. There's just so much more people can learn throughout, you know what I'm saying, technology and what they can utilize and use that they wasn't able to use. People have more of a recovery time even too. Like let's say even a player back then was to have like a 45, 40 inch vertical jump. You know what I'm saying? They're going to crash out a lot earlier in their career because there was less medicines and upgraded and, and, and more experienced like top of the line trainers or doctors of how they have today and stuff. So I feel like that all plays a, a big role. And even if you want to even boil it down to like the foods and stuff like that. Like a lot of like the OGs that I've talked to and stuff, they've always told me that like Gatorade was like an L drink back and they said that Gatorade was nasty as hell. It tasted like, you know what I'm saying, bad. And they didn't really start improving until like the 2000s. I know we all would probably like, what the hell does Gatorade have to do? But you know, it's just a simple thing like that. You know, they just have better, just everything nowadays too, with just everything upgraded. But what is y'all's take on it? Are athletes of right now better athletes of how they was back then? Let's figure it out.